Okay, so it is a couple after. We're going to go ahead and get started. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Welcome to yoga. We're going to get started by getting centered. So please go ahead and sit comfortably, however that looks for you. You can even lay down if you wanted to, if this isn't comfortable. And once you're there, just drop your shoulders away from your ears, feel your body relax, the effort kind of just moving toward the ground, moving into the earth. And as you let go, feel your breath and allow the breath to also move downward. Let it move down toward your belly, toward your pelvis. If you want to think about it anatomically, you can think about the diaphragm, the muscle underneath the lungs that instigates breathing. You can feel it draw downward towards your pelvis as you inhale. And that causes the soft tissue and the belly and the organs to push downward as well. And as the body and the breath start grounding more, just be aware of where your mind is. The mind tends to be the hardest of the three to ground. And we're not shaming that at all, just noticing where the mind is. Is there some preoccupation in your mind right now that's keeping you from staying focused or present? Something in the past, something in the future, some fantasy? And of course, when the mind does move into one of those spaces, you know, we just invite it back. In fact, the breath helps with that. The breath is present. The breath is here, this inhale and this exhale. So you can let the movement of the breath just draw your awareness back each and every time it slips away. And just reassuring yourself here that there's nothing outside of this practice right now, outside of this body that you're in, that needs to be attended to. And this is time that you've set aside in your day to be able to tend to yourself. And so whatever that preoccupation is, if it's not your body, that is, just set it aside for now. You can lay it down on the mat next to you to be picked up later, if and when you're ready. Right, and when you're ready, go ahead and take a deeper, fuller breath now, bringing the palms together, bowing the chin, and again, honoring your body, your breath, your energetic state, and the state of mind that you are in. And may our practice tonight be in service of that. Rubbing the palms together. And taking the heated palms over your eyes, gently brushing over the head and down your neck, bringing yourself on back. And today we're going to begin on our backs. So if you're sitting on a prop, go ahead and move that off to the side and please come to lay down. Take your time with that movement. All right. Once you are on your back, go ahead and hug your right knee into your chest and extend the left leg down to the floor. And if that's too much, you can just leave the left foot flat on the ground, whatever works for you. Good. Just feel this gentle stretch in the hip here. It might help to flex both feet, pulling the toes back. Good. And then keeping the right knee drawn in, please hold behind the right thigh. Again, the foot is flexed here. With your inhale, straighten the leg toward the ceiling, reaching through the heel as best you can. And then exhale, bend the knee and draw it back in. Good. Let's do that again. Inhale, extend the leg toward the ceiling. And exhale, knee to chest, bending the knee. And do that like maybe four or five more times, just starting to lengthen the back of the leg here.
Good. One more time. Extend. And then bend the knee in towards your chest and extend the right leg down to the floor. We're gonna come back to that side here in a little bit, but before we do so, let's get the other side warmed up. Please bring your left knee into your chest, holding onto the shin to start, just getting a little bit warmed up here. Like the first side, you can flex both feet if you'd like to, pulling the toes back. All right, let's do the hamstring stretch. Holding behind the left thigh with both hands. Inhale, extend the leg toward the ceiling, pull the toes back. Exhale, bend the knee, bring it back into your chest. Inhale, extend. And exhale, bend. Go on for, again, about five more times or so. Moving with your breath and feeling length in the back of that leg. Okay, let's do one more. Extend and bend. Beautiful. Go ahead and extend the left leg down to the floor. Let's come back to the first side. Bring the right knee in. Draw it in. Good. Now keep holding on to the right knee or shin with your left hand and allow your right arm to hang out to the side. Good. So how far you go in this is really up to your body. We're going to do a little bit of a twist here. So take a deep breath in. With your exhale, take the, left, the right leg across the body. And then inhale, unwind. Now try to keep your right shoulder grounded this time. Take the leg across and bring it back. Take it across. Inhale, bring it back. We'll do a couple more times. then inhale, unwind. The next exercise is gonna feel very similar, but I'm gonna bring a little bit more engagement here. So when you bring the knee across this time, you're gonna keep your right hip on the ground. So there's a little bit of core engagement here to make sure that that happens. And it means you're not gonna pull as much as you did before. So holding on to the outside of your right knee with your left hand, again, the right arm can be out to the side, ground the right hip, and then just draw the knee more toward the midline of the body. This is going to stretch the outside of the thigh a little bit here. Might even feel like much, that's okay. And then release. We're going to do that two more times, holding for a breath or two each time. Draw the knee toward the midline. Keep the right hip on the ground. It does not pick up at all. Good, release. One more time. Keep the hip grounded. I know it's tempting to want to twist here, but that's not what we're doing. Good, and then release. Extend the right leg down to the floor. Side number two, bring the left leg in. Good, and holding on to the left knee with the right hand, left arm hangs out to the side. You could also do a cactus arm here if there's not room for that. Take a deep breath in. Exhale, take the left knee across the body, twist. Good, inhale, unwind, and let's keep going a few more times. Twist, inhale, unwind. Try to keep your left shoulder on the ground. Good, inhale, unwind. All right, so we're gonna do that subtle hip thing we just did on the other side. So holding onto the outside of the left knee with the right hand, keep the left hip on the ground, draw the left knee toward the midline or a little bit more to the right, keep the hip grounding. Staying for a breath or two. Good, then bring the knee back two more times. Draw it toward the midline, ground the left hip. Breathe. Good, bring it back. One more time. Draw the knee toward the midline, ground the left hip.
Good, bringing it back. And extend the leg down for a moment and just feel sensation of the hips, the legs, your lower back. Good, and then when you're ready, go ahead and bring your feet flat to the floor, heels underneath your knees, about hip width apart. Have your arms down by your side to start. And with your next inhale, lift your arms all the way toward the ceiling and then all the way overhead, knuckles on the floor above you. And as you exhale, go ahead and bring the arms back down. Again, inhale, arms lifting up and over. And exhale, releasing the arms back down. Inhale, arms lift. Exhale, they come down. Let's add the hips now, all right? Pressing the feet into the floor. Inhale, lift the arms, lift the hips, press the pelvis toward the ceiling. Exhale, slowly lower down the arms and hips. Inhale, lifting the arms and hips back up. Exhale, releasing down. Please continue on your own breath. Inhale, lifting, and exhale, lowering. Just getting the spine warmed up, stretching the front of the body as well, and bringing some activation to the glutes. Good, coming into the pose this time, arms overhead, hips raised, let's stay. Make sure your feet are grounding to the floor. Pressing the pelvis up, and there's even a little bit, bit of a dip in your upper back, meaning that the sternum, your breastbone, is coming closer to your chin. Relax your throat, your jaw. And press up a little higher. Good. Taking a deep breath in. And exhale, release the hips and arms back down to the ground. Good. Taking an adjusting breath. All right. So from here, please extend your legs down to the floor. And you're gonna take your arms all the way overhead again, knuckles on the floor above you. And you're going to interlace your fingers and press your palms away from your head, okay? Now with an inhale, I want you to stretch through your feet and stretch through your palms like you just woke up, big stretch. Inhale, push. And then release. Let's do that again one more time, push in both directions. And release. Changing things up a little bit. You might need to bring your arms down to help with this. You're going to keep your hips exactly where they're at. You're going to move your heels to the left side of your yoga mat, heels to the left. And you're going to move your shoulders to the left side of your yoga mat as well, creating a banana shape or crescent shape. Now take your arms overhead again. And you can hold on to your right wrist with your left hand <laughs> and you're going to press through your right foot and your lift through your right arm uh, doing a bigger crescent so hopefully that made sense <laughs> so when you're ready go ahead and stretch to the left keep your right hip grounding to the floor here stretching through the heel stretching through the arm <sighs> reach 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 breathe Good. Then relax the stretch. Walk your feet back to center. Bring your arms down. Walk your shoulders to center. Look up. Make sure that it actually happened. <laughs> and then when you feel like you're back in center, we'll prep for the other side. So again, hips stay at center. Let's move your heels to the right. And then just shift your shoulders to the right as well. Again, hips stay where they were at. Arms overhead, knuckles on the floor. You're going to hold on to your left arm with your right hand around the wrist. And then go ahead and reach through the left arm, give it a nice pull, and then extend through the left heel. 
As you do so, the left hip is going to be tempted to pop up. Just go ahead and push that back down and feel some length on that left side. Big breaths here. Good. One more breath. Reach. And then relax the stretch. And walk your heels to center. Bringing your arms down, shift your shoulders to center. Look up and make sure that actually happens. Your back, everything aligned where it should be. Good. Doing a little bit more work here on our backs. I'm going to ask you to bring the soles of your feet together in butterfly and have the pinky edge of the feet on the floor. All right, so the knees are going wide. This next movement's a bit more subtle, and so just stick with it, all right? <laughs> and just keep breathing. So when you, with your breath nice and regulated, I want you to slowly, very slowly, over the course of maybe three to four breaths, bring your knees together. Slowly bring the knees together. The feet might fall apart at the top, that's okay. And then once the knees come together, spend three to four breaths with the knees going wide again. And try to keep them moving at the same rate. And once they're wide, again, slowly bring them back together. Breathe. Slowly. It only works if you do it slowly. <laughs> Once they're together, take them apart. We're going to do a couple more rounds. So just keep going at your own pace. Once you're at your widest or narrowest point, just move back out or back in again. Slowly closing. Slowly opening. And about the fourth or fifth round, you'll really start to feel what this has been activating, these deep pelvic muscles, your low abdomen and your lower back, helping to stabilize the sacrum. Try not to clench your teeth here. <laughs> All right, we're going to close the legs one more time and then take them wide one more time, all right? And take your time getting there. But once the knees go fully wide again, you can stop. You can either just keep the uh, feet together, knees wide, or if that's uncomfortable, you can extend the legs to the floor, but just take a moment and feel sensation. Good. Now take your time, but when you're ready, go ahead and roll to your right side and we'll come up to hands and knees. Table pose. All right, bring the hands under your shoulders, knees beneath the hips. Good. With your inhale, look forward. With your exhale, round your back, tuck the chin and tail under. Inhale, look forward again. Exhale, round the back. And just keep going. Moving between these two postures, moving with your breath. Good. Let's add child's pose, okay? So inhale, looking forward. Exhale, sink back into child's pose. Inhale, back up to hands and knees. Exhale, round the back. Don't go to child's pose, just round the back. Inhale, look forward again, tailbone lifts. Now, child's pose. 
Inhale back up. Exhale round the back. Inhale, look forward. Exhale, child's pose. A few more times. Inhale up. Rounding the back. Looking forward. Child's pose. Inhale up. Around the back. Looking forward. Child's pose. Let's do one more round, all right? Inhale back up. Round your back. Looking forward. In child's pose and go ahead and stay in child's pose for a few breaths this time. Sinking back and just feeling sensation. What's happening in the body. Go ahead. With your next inhale, please come up to hands and knees. All right. So from hands and knees, go ahead and step your right foot between your hands. Back knee is on the ground. And you can either have your hands or fingertips on the floor here on blocks, or you might be able to interlace on the front thigh. All right. And so doing whatever you need to do here. And you're going to sink a little bit further forward. And then you're going to pull out a little bit. Just pull back a little bit. And then exhale, sink a bit further forward, and then pull out a bit. Sinking forward, pulling back, sinking forward, pulling back. Just a few more times. Good, let's do one more. Sinking forward, bring your hands to the ground if they're not already, they can also be on blocks of course, and then straighten your right leg and then pull the toes toward you, feeling the back of the leg lengthen. You might need to walk your hands back a little bit here and that's okay. We'll stay for three or four breaths. Good, and then go ahead and rock forward and sweep that right leg back, child's pose. Let's do the other side, inhale up to hands and knees. Stepping the left foot between the hands. Again, hands on the floor, blocks, or on your, upper, on your uh, left thigh. And the same thing, sink forward, pull back. Sinking down, pulling back. Do you see subtle pulses in the hips? And breathing, <laughs> especially with these subtler movements, it kind of feels sometimes like we have to be do, doing something bigger, broader, more expansive. And that's not actually the case when it comes to working some muscles, especially deep into the pelvis and the hips here. So little pulses. Just a few more. Good, as you sink forward this time, bring the hands to the floor, straighten the front leg, pull the toes back again. Again, you can walk your hands back a little bit for stability. The hands could be on blocks too, if you need to. And just feel the back of the left leg lengthen here and breathing into whatever's there for you. Good, go ahead and rock forward and sweep the left leg back. This time we're gonna come into downward facing dog. So curl the toes under and lift the hips. And we're gonna stay for about five or six breaths here. And if you want to, you can walk the dog out, of course, or you can just hold the leg still 
and feeling ex uh, extension in your spine, the hips reaching toward the ceiling behind you. And breathe. Good, one more breath in down dog. Then inhale, floating down onto hands and knees. And exhale, child's pose. Good, inhale back up to hands and knees. This time exhale, bend your elbows in towards your waist, bring your chest down to the floor and release the hips. And have your hands underneath your shoulders here. We're gonna play around with locust pose. Actually, before we do that, we'll play around with cobra. So keep the legs and the hips on the floor. With your inhale, lift your head and chest away from the ground, elbows stay bent. Exhale, release down, turn the head to a side. Inhale, lift back up, cobra, head and chest lift. Exhale, release, turn the head to the opposite side. And just keep going, inhale, cobra. Exhale, release. Inhale, Cobra. Exhale, release. Last one and we'll hold it. Cobra pose, coming up. Roll the shoulders down the back, looking forward with the heart. Breathing, of course. Squeezing the elbows in towards your sides. Deep breath in, and then exhale, carefully release down. All right, so now we'll play around with different versions of Cobra, all right? So we're gonna be doing one leg at a time to start. With your next inhale, roll the shoulders down the back with the head, chest, and left leg. Head, chest, left leg. Exhale, release. Inhale, head, chest, and right leg. Exhale, release. Let's do both legs. Head, chest, and both legs. And down. Left leg. And down. Right leg. And down. Both legs, please. Exhale, down. We're going to add on to this, all right? So listen carefully. Inhale with the left leg. Stay up. Exhale, bend the left knee. Inhale, extend the left leg. Exhale, release down. Good. Inhale, right leg. Keep the leg lifting. Exhale, bend the right knee. Inhale, extend the right leg. And exhale, release down. Can you do both? <laughs> Grounding the pelvis with the head, chest, and both legs. Inhale. Stay up. Exhale. Bend both knees. Inhale. Extend the legs. Exhale. Release down. Let's do the first side again. Left leg. Inhale. Exhale. Bend the knee. Inhale. Extend the leg. Exhale. Down. Right leg. Inhale. Exhale, bend the right knee. Inhale, extend the right leg. Exhale, down. Good, both legs. Inhale, lift. Exhale, bend both knees. Inhale, extend. And exhale, release down. Turn the head to the side and take an adjusting breath. So we're gonna do that last flow just one more time, just one more time. And we're gonna add a little bit of a hold to it, all right? So stay as long as you can. I'll plan for us to stay about three breaths. If that's too much for you, you can always come down sooner. So hands on the shoulder, squeeze the elbows in. Let's do the left leg. Inhale, lift the left leg. Exhale, bend the left knee and stay. And breathe, keep the chest lifting, keep the knee lifting. Inhale, squeeze up, and then extend the left leg. 
and release down. Not too bad. Let's try the other side. Inhale, lift the right leg, head and chest. Bend the right knee. Stay for three. And then inhale, extend the right leg and exhale down. Yes, we are gonna do both legs. Just do as much as you can, all right? So grounding the pelvis, inhale, lift the head, chest, and both legs. Exhale, bend both knees, lift. Inhale, extend both legs, and exhale, float back down. Again, turn the head and feel. Now, if your back is feeling a little bit crunchy right now, don't worry, we're gonna take care of that. So to help that happen, I'll ask you to curl your toes under, push up to hands and knees, and before you go into a forward fold, so before you go into child's pose, come into downward facing dog. After doing deep belly back bending, it's good to extend the spine before folding. So bend your knees a bit more than you normally do here and shoot the hips powerfully toward the ceiling behind you. And stay for about four or five deep breaths. Good. When you're ready, float down onto hands and knees. Now you can come into child's pose. Now have the knees closer together than further apart. And draping the body down, feeling that stretch in the back. Think about sinking the hips toward the heels. Emphasizing that stretch in the back body. And breathe. Good. With your next inhale, go ahead and bring yourself up to a seat. And kick your legs out in front of you. So I'm not sure if we're going to come into a standing posture at all tonight because uh, I'm kind of feeling the ground right now. So hopefully that's supportive for you. For our next practice, you may need some support, meaning a yoga block or a folded blanket. Um, we're going to put this underneath our hips, so adding this can help make or break a pose for you. So if you have something nearby that you can use for this, please do so. I'm going to use a block because intuitively I'm just feeling that that's what will support me. Good. Now once you are sitting on whatever it is you're sitting on, you're going to bring your feet flat to the floor and nice and wide apart here, kind of making an M with your body. <laughs> Good. Now you wanna make sure that you can sit up nice and tall here. So if you find your lower back rounding, that does mean you need some support underneath your hips. So try to bring something there if you can, all right? So let's just start by establishing this tall spine. So you can hold on to your knees, drop your shoulders down the back and feel the crown of your head lift straight up toward the ceiling. It's almost like there's a forward tilt to the pelvis here, as the sternum lifts and the crown of the head lifts. All right, now keep this length in your spine. I'll ask you to lift your arms overhead and try to keep your arms up by your ears. What you don't wanna do here is collapse like this. We're gonna be doing a forward fold and this is not doing anything for you, all right? Instead, you lead with the heart and exhale, you come forward as far as you can. Okay, and that might not be that far, and that's okay. Then inhale coming up. And let's go ahead and join me if you haven't already. So lift the arms up. With an exhale, hinge at the hips. Bring the heart down. Inhale back up. Exhale, hinge at the hips. Inhale back up. It's really good for the lower back. Exhale, fold. Inhale up, try to keep the arms up by the ears. If it's too much to have the arms straight, by the way, you can always do cactus arms and do it here.
Good. Now fold to your furthest point. Again, without the back rounding at all, the upper back that is, and just bring the hands to the floor. And if the floor is too far away, you can just bring your hands onto your legs, but keep the heart leading and keep that stretch in the lower back happening. You'll also feel this in the hips, of course. This is definitely a, a hip exercise. Good. When you're ready, go ahead and sit back up. All right. So I hope you like this one because we're gonna do another exercise in this vein, okay? So when you're ready, go ahead and extend your left leg straight out from the direction it was going right now. So just straighten it out that way. We're still gonna be folding directly forward, but one leg is gonna be extended and then we're going to try it on the other side, okay? So either bringing the arm straight up and overhead or you can do cactus, of course, take a deep breath in, feeling that length. And then exhale, hinge at the hips, and come forward and inhale, come back up. Exhale forward and up. Just a few more times. Only going as far as what works for you today. Last one. And inhale up and release the arms. Go ahead and bring the left foot flat to the floor again, and this time extend the right leg forward, or not forward, out to the side, sorry. <laughs> All right, five times, lift the arms up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, up. Three more times, keep going. and fold, and lift up. Go ahead and release the arms. Good. Let's bring the feet together, or to be honest for this one, depending on how much flexibility you have in your legs, your lower back will indicate where your feet go. So if you have the most <laughs> access to the backs of your legs, your feet can be closer together. If you need them to be a little bit wider apart, that's okay too. This is a little bit more accessible, all right? Good, now lift the arms up, take a deep breath in. With the exhale, hinge at the hips, go as far forward as you can without rounding the upper back, and then bring the hands down onto the legs. Don't worry about grabbing the feet, even if you can reach them. Shoulders gliding down the back, chin toward the throat. Try to keep the head in line with the spine, so don't drop it, keep it in line. And breathe. Good, then inhale, sit back up. Beautiful. So we're gonna come back onto our backs. So taking your time getting there. It's not time to rest just yet, but we are getting closer. All right, coming to lie down. Hug your knees into your chest when you get there. All right. Now, once you're here on your back, go ahead and extend the legs toward the ceiling, pull the toes back, and you're going to hold on to starting the outsides of your legs. And you'll see what I mean. We're going to be switching the hands around a little bit here. But earlier, when we had the feet together on the ground, we slowly opened and closed the legs. We're going to do that here, but with the legs extended, OK? So holding on to the outside of the legs, you're going to slowly take the legs wide. Keep pulling the toes back but it should take about three to four breaths to come to your widest point. Now bring your hands to the inside of the thighs when you stretch your widest point and slowly bring the legs back together. And you're kind of pushing the hands into the legs, creating a bit more resistance here. 
may be shaking a little bit. <laughs> Once the legs come together, hold on to the outsides and slowly open. The arms there to help stabilize that process. Hands to the inside of the thighs, slowly bring them back together. Hands to the outside, slowly take them apart and just keep going at your own pace. It might be slower or slightly quicker than what I'm doing, but do go slowly. It should take again, three to four breaths for each movement. Breathe. Almost there. One more time together and wide. And actually, we end with the legs together. So bring them together one more time if you're not there already. And once the legs are together, go ahead and bend the knees into your chest and take an adjusting breath once you're there. Okay, so continuing on, I'll ask you to take your arms out to the sides again, making a T-shape with the body. And actually, let's do this one leg at a time. So keep your right knee drawn in, and extend your left leg down to the floor. So right knee drawn in, arms out to the sides. Take a deep breath in. With your exhale, take the right knee across the body toward the floor on your left side. Now your left hand can come down and hold on to the right knee if you'd like to. Think about grounding your right shoulder to the ground. And you might even turn your chin to the right and breathe. All right, when you're ready, go ahead and unwind. Side number two, extending the right leg down, bring the left knee in. Good. Taking the arms out to the sides, take a deep breath in. Exhale, take the left knee across the body toward the floor on your right. Your right arm can come down and hold on to the left knee. And think about grounding the left shoulder to the ground. You might even turn your chin that way. And deep breaths. Breathe. Good, then, then inhale carefully, unwind. And hug both knees into your chest. And then something a little bit different here, okay? You're gonna hold onto your knees with your palms. So you're holding onto the tops of the knees like that with your palms, fingertips pointing towards your feet. 
So just let your arms control this one, except you're gonna try to keep your lower back on the ground. So just to demonstrate here, you can watch me first. I'm going to straighten my arms, pushing my knees away from me. And then I'm gonna bend the elbows, bring the knees back in. As you do this, what's gonna attempt, what might be tempting is when the knees are forward for the lower back to pick up. And so try to pull that back down as the knees go forward, okay? And we'll just do that a few times. So starting at the starting point, <laughs> lower back grounding, go ahead and straighten the arms, push the knees away, and then bend the elbows, draw them back in. Now, when you draw the knees back in, the lower back might, like the tailbone might pop back up. So try to keep the tailbone down as well. Push away, pull in, push away, Pulling in. Let's do that about four or five more times. Keep the lower back rounding. And keep the tailbone curling back toward the floor as well. Good, last time. And then draw the knees back in. You can hold on to the shins if you'd like to. And just relax for a moment. And just think if there's anything else your body needs tonight to feel complete in this practice. If there's a quick stretch that needs to happen, nothing intense, just to wrap this up before we lay on our backs. And you can do that pose if you need to, or you can just keep hanging out here. And then take your time, take another 30 seconds to a minute or so, but when you're ready, you can come into our finally relaxation posture. And when you do finally come to relax and take your time if you're still working there, have the heels about mat width apart, toes falling out to the sides, the hips can relax. Arms down by your sides, wrists about a foot away from your hips, palms face up. And soft jaw, soft eyes. And as you come to relax, just try to let go of effort. And I want your mind to just gently, yet continuously scan your body. In wherever you find effort or tension, see if you can let that go just by relaxing a bit more. And if you're not sure how to do that, if you get to a certain point, just repeat in your mind, I am releasing tension in this part of my body. Imagine it relaxing, and then just move on to whatever next point of interest there is.
releasing tension wherever you find it.
Isso. Vês, please begin to take a deeper, fuller breath. And make some gentle movements in your hands and feet, your arms and legs. Gently stretching, slowly bringing your body and awareness back to the space around you. And when you're ready, you can roll gently to your right side Slowly coming on up to a comfortable seat. Take your time. And once you've made it to a seat, just sit and feel for a moment the initial effects of this practice on your body, your energetic state, and your mind. Maybe there's been a shift from before, maybe not. And there's no attachment that that shift had to be for the better, but just noticing if there has been a shift. And then taking a deeper, fuller breath when you're ready. Bring your palms together and bow the chin, honoring yourself for the work that you've done here tonight. Gratitude for all of the effort you put forth. And may that effort and this practice continue to serve you. So until next time, namaste.